Lestrade, what is it this time? Seven cases, three to five possible solutions, and six to ten endings to each case, Sherlock Holmes Crimes and Punishment is the latest and the most ambitious in the Adventures of Sherlock Holmes series by Frogwares and published by Focus Home Interactive. Thanks to the television show Sherlock, and to a lesser extent Elementary, Holmes and Watson are more popular now than they have been in decades. The stakes have never been higher to produce a quality Arthur Conan Doyle inspired video game. Good Lord, Holmes. Ah, death with a peculiarly Roman piquancy. Like the one you almost had an hour ago. And let us forget about that. It took me 17 hours. I cracked every case. I brought England's wrongdoers to justice, I think. And in the end, I can say I enjoyed Crimes and Punishments much more than I predicted. Is it a perfect game? Far from it. Is it a disaster? Not even close. Crimes and Punishments is an adequate romp through late 1800s London and the surrounding areas that both pushes the adventure genre in some new and interesting directions, but it also succumbs to some video game genre-wide faults. Each case plays out like a short story in a book. They aren't necessarily related to one another, but new cases aren't unlocked until the previous one is completed. Though the mysteries themselves don't become more complex, the mini-games, like lock-picking and puzzles to unlock clues, do become more difficult. The game starts off on the right foot with a wonderfully grisly murder mystery with the victim impaled on the wall by his own wailing harpoon. It's the perfect way to introduce players to the game's interview and puzzle mechanics. Interviewing suspects and witnesses lead to new clues, but physical clues in the environments, or by inspecting what NPCs are wearing and how they hold themselves, can help catch someone in a lie or in a contradiction. This quick inspection of what each character is wearing is clearly inspired by the BBC series, and it works well in a video game setting. But clues aren't all found by grilling witnesses. A large portion of the game involves searching the environment. As clues and stories start to piece together, Crimes and Punishments opens up the Synapse Deduction System, which chains corroborating stories and physical clues and brings them to a logical conclusion. But each case has multiple outcomes, all of which have solid evidence to back up your suspicions. Once you come to a personally satisfactory conclusion as to who you think the guilty culprit is, you're then asked whether or not that person is morally at fault. So you can find someone guilty of murder but choose not to testify with your evidence because you feel they were within their right. The game never comes forward and says definitively, you're right or you're wrong with your decisions. This open-ended sort of victory is oddly satisfying. It's not the game's version of correct, it's my version of correct. But it's a version of correct that made me second-guess myself. On the other hand, some cases lack a real sense of closure no matter what verdict you render. You may deduce where a final piece of evidence is, or where some bodies may be buried, but you never find out for sure, and in that regard, it can be maddening. For the most part, the cases are fun little mysteries and feature some fantastic writing. Out of the seven, five of them captivated me. The remaining two, however, fell so flat that I felt no need to explore any other possible outcomes that might have come from them. The minigames and puzzles within Crimes and Punishments are pretty satisfying. There are a few, particularly the arm wrestling and rope bridge crossing minigames, that are infuriating, but for the most part, Puzzles, minigames, and finding new clues all follow a path of logic. There are no absurd solutions to simple problems, and thankfully, the game doesn't turn into a daunting pixel hunt. Don't be mistaken, there will be times when you'll have to hunt through the environment just to find one little item to progress the story. The game might also force players to make deductions a bit prematurely just to advance the case. One of CMP's biggest setbacks is its misuse or disuse of available resources. The costume and disguise system could have been utilized to a greater effect, but sadly it only comes into play twice throughout the entire game, and Watson, who should be brimming with personality and insight, largely plays a background role throughout the entire experience. He remains inhumanly upright, silent, and on the occasion when he does talk, he doesn't act like the capable doctor and former soldier that he should be. The game also has more than its fair share of invisible walls and janky environmental exploration. 
But who exactly is Crimes and Punishments for? I'd say that anyone who's interested in Sherlock Holmes, whether the classic version or even the new modern iterations of the character, will enjoy themselves with Crimes and Punishments. It's not going to rock anyone's world, but it'll certainly entertain for a while. I'd also recommend it for anyone who's new to the adventure genre after being introduced by Telltale Games' The Walking Dead series, but wants something requiring a little more brain power. I would not recommend it to people who haven't spent much time with the adventure genre, nor to gamers who only play faster paced shooters or action games. But truly, I enjoyed my time with Crimes and Punishments. The morality, judgment, and deduction systems work amazingly well for the adventure genre. The stories entertained me, and I felt a sense of accomplishment when I finished the game. But the flaws the game has might be too much for more demanding gamers. At $40, Crimes and Punishments feels adequately priced, especially for the quality of the writing and the length of time it took me to complete it. It's a good move in the right direction for the series and the genre, it's just not as refined as it could be. It's definitely a serviceable game, worthy of the time of the curious and its directly targeted audience. On sale, I'd consider it a done deal. This video was made possible through generous fan donations on Patreon.